For years, game designers have been pushing the limits of graphic performance. They've increased resolution. They've perfected ragdoll physics. They've achieved real-time ray tracing. But there is one barrier to true immersion that still eludes artists. That barrier is the Void of Fuchsia. And for those wondering, the Void of Fuchsia does not refer to that empty flamingo exhibit at your local zoo. It refers to the overly restrictive area Messen provides for graphic replacement with NES enhancement packs. Areas that are off limits mercilessly torment pack authors with their misleadingly cheery shade of pink. But there is now hope. A secret ancient technique has been passed down through generations of pixel-loving wizards that gives anyone the power to overcome this void of Fuchsia. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. Alright, so to get started in this fourth video detailing enhancement pack creation for the Messen NES emulator, we're going to need Messen 2, which was recently updated by Sour with some awesome new enhancement pack functionality. Be warned that spoilers are ahead for a Zelda 2 pack currently in the works by a pack author who goes by Garrick. Assuming you're okay with that, we're going to show you how to take artwork that looks like this and make it look like this. All possible with the power of the new addition function. Now, this is a slightly advanced video, and if you're unfamiliar with Messen NES Enhancement Pack Creation, check out one of my more beginner-friendly videos in the description below to learn the basics. I've recorded the Thunderbird graphics and manually rearranged the tiles. The result I have is here. If I want to replace the graphics with this here, you immediately see the problem. The new graphics extend beyond into the areas that are fuchsia. That used to mean they were off limits, but now we have a way to overcome that. So I'm going to pull up the highres.txt file to show the coding for the Thunderbird graphics right now. Now just as a refresher for everyone that might be following along with the playlist of mess and enhancement packs, this is the coding that corresponds to the Thunderbird graphics that I've manually rearranged. The tile.21 refers to the fact that the file that has the graphics is number 21 in the list of overall PNG files. This refers to the tile address of the graphics. These are the X and Y coordinates of each one of the addresses here. This is the brightness, and this Y refers to the fact that this applies to all palettes. To add beyond what's already here, we're going to actually add this coding that I've pre-prepared and I'm going to explain how it works. So what is all this coding I just added? Let's just zoom in here. And this first set indicates that we're going to use an addition function. Right here is what I'm going to call the anchor point. Now this corresponds to the graphics that we're using to reference when we're adding something new. To see an example of what we can use as an anchor point, go to Debug, Sprite Viewer, and you can use anything as an anchor point. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell Messen I'd like to draw additional graphics, a certain offset from what's noted here. So if you right click, hit copy tile HD pack format, and if you hit paste, this first line corresponds to the top of the box that we referenced up here. The next line is the bottom of the box. We'd just like to use this top section, we're so we're going to disregard what's on the bottom here. So you can see this matches up with what's down here, so that's how you obtain that. Now what we'd like to do is navigate 8 pixels to the left of what we're adding graphics to. And the reason we're doing 8 pixels is because typically NES games have boxes that are 8x8 squares, so if we go 8 pixels to the left, it'll add an entire new square right here. And we'd like to have the Y offset at 0, so basically it's just level with this top portion. This next data set here corresponds to a unique identifier for your addition graphics. Now it can be whatever you'd like, just make sure that you, one, write down what you listed here so you can remember it later. Also, make sure that you have the same number of values as what's listed here and here in the example. This last value here, the Y, indicates we'd like this to apply to all palettes. 
If you'd like it to apply to just one palette, you would select N. This next line here indicates what we'd like to do with the addition function we've just created. Now, as what's listed below, we simply list that, okay, for tile 21, which again is referencing this PNG file here, and specifically for tile address 333 and F000333, the same as what we've listed here, we'd like to reference the graphics at specific XY coordinates 80. Now that corresponds to this number one here. It's listed at 80. Now you can determine that with this tool here, the rectangular marquee tool. And if you zoom in, and this is using Photoshop, and you left click and drag, we can see that the width is eight pixels and the height is zero. So this, we'd like to list our new graphics, which is this one I've added here, specifically to eight zero. And as before, one is the brightness again, and we're gonna say Y again for this to apply to all palettes. Now that's all we need to add in one additional 8x8 eight eight box. And again, this is the line that indicates our new addition function. And this indicates what we'd like to do with that function. So now that we've done that, make sure to save both the highres.txt file as well as your PNG file. And now that we've done that, let's close everything out and see how it looks. And there it is, the new addition function worked. Now the reason that there's actually a one on both sides is because with this particular boss, it actually, you only have to replace one side and it mirrors it for the other side. If you repeat that process enough times, you should be able to clear out enough blocks on the left-hand side here to insert your new graphics. As a reminder, this is the new sprite we'd like to insert. So once we're done, we should be able to get a gameplay video that looks something along the lines of this. Now you'll notice that the final boss isn't flapping its wings. To add the flapping wings, we'd need to add frame range condition functions. To do this, check out video number three in my Messen Enhancement Pack video series. Once those frames are added and you've repeated the process in this video for every single area where Pink Fuchsia conflicts with new artwork, the final result should look like this. And that's actually everything you should need to know to create your own addition function. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy gaming. Attention, ground units. Anti citizen reported in this community. Code Lock, cauterize, stabilize. You are charged with. Anti-Civil Activity Level 1, Protection Unit, Prosecution Code, Duty, Sword.